Andrew Ollerton, it's great to be here with you to talk about your new book. Thanks, Abby. The yeah. Bible, A Story That Makes Sense of Life. Yeah. You haven't written the Bible, but you've written a book about it. I, I think that one's done, so I just did this. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. An accompanying guide. Thank you. Mm. So let's start with why. Why did you write it and why now? Well, a uh, little quote on the back cover is a summary of why. When we make sense of the Bible, the Bible makes sense of us. I just really felt like, yeah, that, that book needs to be written. Not just that we make sense of the Bible, which is really important. How do we navigate it? But then how does that become a mirror? Like, oh, yeah, that's me. As I made sense of the Bible, the Bible's made sense of me. I had a really interesting conversation with a guy on the touchline as our sons were playing football. And he just, you know, he'd been listening to some podcasts, thinking about the Bible. And he just said, but what's it got to do with me? Mm. And I thought, I need to... Oh, yeah, just felt moved to, to do something about that. So Great. this is my answer. So how have you structured it then to help us make sense of the Bible? Well, it's in six parts, and each of these parts track us through the Bible storyline uh, from origins, Genesis, through to hope, uh, Revelation. But what I'm doing is trying to do with each part two things. Here's the episode of the Bible, origins and how did God get the world going and human, our human story. Exodus, you know, how did Israel get delivered from Egypt in, and so forth. But then connect that experience in the Bible with our experience as humans. So it's origins and our human desire for meaning. And then, so how can we revisit our origin story and discover who we are? Yeah. And then Exodus, like it's not just Israel that need freedom, we all need freedom. So how do we get free and live free in our lives? In that sense, I like to think the Bible is like Russian dolls, right? You can, yeah. you can read Israel's story and then inside it's like, oh, that, that's my story. That's who I am. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I've done. Okay. So there are loads of other books about the Bible out there. Why would somebody buy this one? What's your USP? I think it's, it's back to that thing of relevance, right? There's plenty of books that pick up on the reliability of the Bible. That's really important, but that's not what this is primarily trying to do. It's almost saying to people who say, well, so what if the Bible's true? Why would I bother with it? Like, what's it going to, how's it going to make a difference in my life? So each of the mini chapters, it's actually broken into small chapters, ends with a little reflection and scripture reading as if to say, don't just read this, kind of live it. And here's how you can. So I think People would buy it because they, they want to just not own, only own a Bible, mm -hmm. they want to make sense of it and feel like I can live that now. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's the USB. I suppose also one of the things I like to do is I like communicating kind of complex ideas simply. And, and I like bringing a bit of humor to that. I've tried anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. The jury's out. But a bit of humor, a, bit of very, a lot of personal anecdotes. I talk for, quite honestly and personally. Mm -hmm. So I think that blend of depth of biblical thinking and quite surprisingly relevant and contemporary. Well, I hope that gives it a USP. Great. Um, so going back to the guy at the touchline, is this book written for him, for a non-believer, or is it written for Christians, or is it for everybody? Both, I'd like to say, okay. because I think that's a reflection of the Bible. I think the Bible is simultaneously our best discipleship resource. It helps Christians grow mm -hmm. in their relationship with God. I actually think it's our best mission resource as well. It's like mm -hmm. so many people come on a journey through engaging with the Bible. So I've tried to reflect that here. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely for the, the guy on the touchline. In fact, I say in the introduction, you know, you may not believe the Bible, but try it on for size, you know, yeah. see if it fits and if it makes sense of you. So that's a, very much an offer to those who are outside looking in. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, all of us who are, if you like, a bit more inside in terms of faith, we all need help to make sense of the Bible. I mean, none of us know our way around Exodus and exile and certainly know our way so well around that we can say that's exactly how it's relevant to me. So I think we'll find Christians will buy the book. Mm -hmm. They'll read it and think, gosh, I need to get another one of these for my mate, you know, that I work with or down the pub and it's a discipleship and mission all, all at the same time, like, like the Bible itself. Yeah, that's great. Um, you have also written the Bible course. Mm. So is this a follow on from the Bible course or is this a separate thing completely? Is it for the same people that did the Bible course? Is it Manchester United changing their shirts so you have to buy a new one? Yeah, exactly. uh, it's, it, <laughs> um, I think that, well, let me use a, a metaphor. You know, for some people, when it comes to a car, they want to lift the bonnet look inside and see the mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what the Bible course does particularly well, is it shows how the whole thing sort of fits together yeah. and makes sense and, and works. Mm -hmm. But other people say, forget what's under the bonnet. I just want to get in the car and go somewhere, you know, and experience yeah. something. And I think that's what the book's trying to do. It's almost saying, you know, the Bible course will show you how it fits together. Mm -hmm. And then the book will say, and let me take you on a journey and we'll actually go somewhere with all of this. And 
And therefore, I think it's both really. I think if you've done the Bible course, you'll definitely want to read the book. It's, it's really fresh and new content. If you haven't done the Bible course, probably I'd say start with a book because it'll f- help you find your way into its relevance. And then you might think, well, now I do want to have a look under the bonnet now that you've taken me for a spin. Yeah. So that's the way it works. Great. And you wrote some of this during lockdown, right? Yes. Has that affected how you wrote it, um, the content that's in there? Yeah, it has. It was interesting. I I was writing this chapter on community when the lockdown hit and we were told you must not socialise. So that was actually a really good experience because that chapter is entitled Spirit and the Human Thirst for Community. And I realised when we are isolated from each other, we become thirsty, Mm -hmm. dehydrated socially and and parched for that kind of, well, that human interaction that we're made for. That really helped me write that chapter. And I think just generally COVID shown us we're not in control of the world as much as we thought we were yeah. and we need each other more than we realized we did and so that definitely helped write that section and it's an interesting sort of you know half of the book is written bc <laughs> before <laughs> coronavirus yeah. uh, the other half afterwards something something similar to the bible there isn't yeah, there but anyway yeah. slight echo of it but it really has shaped the book and also now shaped how i've understood it to be relevant you know you, you can't see these things coming no. but i believe god's providential and i just w- wonder whether this book is part of uh, our response to why the Bible is still so relevant. Yeah. And do you have a favourite bit of the Bible that you like writing about? Um, I really enjoyed writing. I really enjoyed writing the the section. There's the, as I say, it's broken into mini chapters. Mm. Each mini chapter takes about ten minutes to read. So there's a mini chapter on Daniel. I really enjoyed writing that about how his experience of exile, living in a foreign, hostile culture, really speaks to our experience today. Mm. I really enjoyed. No, I didn't. I really grappled with the chapter on the resurrection because it's like, it's so profound. And yet, how do you say anything that's not just obvious or yeah. almost banal and, and, and reducing it? So I, I, that's the one I wrote and rewrote more than any other. And I'm really pleased with how that's ended up. But it was, um, it was a journey for me. Great. Well, it'd be a journey for us reading it as well, I'm sure. Um, and lastly, what are your hopes for this book? What do you hope it will achieve for people? Well, look, I hope the guy that I spoke to on the touchline, I'm going to give him a copy for free and see if he reads it. So I hope for someone who's just saying, what has the Bible got to do with me? Mm. I hope that this book finds its way into their hands and is part of their journey. And it is a journey. Am I, you know, we're all on a journey with the Bible yeah. and we're all grappling with questions and some of those will remain unresolved, I'm sure. But, yeah. but nevertheless, I like to think that the book, you know, I love mountain climbing. That comes through in the book. And I love taking people, guiding people to places they couldn't get on their own or they wouldn't feel confident to go on their own. Yeah. And then saying, now look at where you've come. You know, you've kind of made it yourself. Now you can go on and explore from here. Yeah. I hope that's what the book does for Christians and those who are seeking. It's almost like I can guide you to some places you may not have got on your own, but now you're ready to explore for yourself. And I think if, if we do that, people's confidence in the Bible and its relevance to their lives mm-hmm will increase and uh, that's what we need right now. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. It's been great to talk to you. Thanks, Abby.